this place, the Big K Guest Ranch, sits inside of what's called a crescent. And the tips of the crescent are a mile apart in each direction. It was called the Kellogg Crescent, named after John J. Kellogg, who was postmaster here. The valley was settled by immigrants who came over across the plains in 1847, 1848, and into the 1850s and beyond. But there were people here long before then, the Umpqua Indians and the Kalapuya Indians, who lived in this this land they called China Gooch, which was a, their word for a crescent. And here the river goes in all directions as it's trying to find its way down to the ocean. It created a valley of some 2,000 acres of bottom land and bench land that is unique in the area for its fertile ground and for the wildlife. We're here on the Kesterson Place, the Big K Guest Ranch in Southern Oregon on the Umpqua River. It's a working ranch with cattle and logging operations and the hospitality. They welcome us with a big dinner, steaks and catfish. As the sunlight was going out of the valley and the darkness was settling in and the birds begin to quiet down, I started thinking about the morning and what we're going to be doing on the Umpqua fishing for smallmouth bass. Todd, it's June. The water's a little higher, a little colder than we're used to. What are we going to do today? Well, you're right about the water. The water's about two feet higher than it normally is. So uh, at this date, we've never fished it this high before, but that I think is going to play in our favor. Uh, we've got a little cloud cover. We're really wanting to hit the fish on top, so I'm hoping the cloud cover will help us make those fish feel a little more uh, aggressive, not looking into the sun. Besides that, the river bottom has algae on it like we've never seen. And uh, we thought with the high water, no algae this year, but we've got it, so we're going to fish high, keep our plugs, baits clean, and hopefully the fish will be looking up. You guys are in for a treat today. So you're going to fish some new Lumis NRX rods. I think they're the lightest rods on earth for their weight. And um, when you're out, when you're casting all day, have people coming out, casting for eight hours, or not used to it, makes it really nice on the wrists. Um, got some pretty sweet little light, lightweight Shimano reels. Gonna fish some little wake baits on the surface, try to get the bass to come up and, and blast them. This is probably the best setup for smallmouth bass on earth. In my opinion so Kelly brought along a fly rod and we're going to get it set up and get it ready to go because sometimes the the fly presentation is just what a particular fish needs in a particular spot at a particular time so we just want to be ready for it and uh, we'll, get, so we'll get that rod all set up and and put it aside until we need it we're fishing with Brad Hester I've known Brad for years he's a good friend of mine the family is a good friend of ours and we're also fishing with Kelly Pike. Kelly is an accomplished fisherman, but she hasn't spin fished for bass before. So it's going to be fun to expose her to um, a new way of fishing and, and see her bring some fish to the boat. Our guide is Todd Harrington. And Todd is uh, somebody I've known of for several years. We've never fished together. and. He's got a great reputation working with the Big K now, and I'm really looking forward to getting on the water with him. Just drop this jig down and shake it. No hopping. The moment you hop this thing, that bass knows you're a fisherman. Really? If you can just shake it like you're a little nervous, uh -huh. this bass will come over. As soon as they turn their head like this, they're going to suck it in, and you want to jerk hard. I mean, real hard. Go right over to the back, Eddie.
The smallmouth bass were brought here from Ohio and introduced into Oregon rivers and they really have taken off in the main stem Umpqua. You can find them behind every rapid, in behind every big boulder along the edges. It's a fish that's uniquely suited for river environment. You see that, Brad? To your right. You see where those rings are? Oh, oh, oh. Try it again. I don't think you got a hook in him. Right. Go back there. See the weight? Ooh, got one. There, we got one on? Yeah. Got one. It's a good one, too. Yeah. Nice. This is a good one to start off with. Oh, there's a bass with him, too. Boy, that's a nice fish there. <laughs> Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Look at that. Good. See that red eye? Yeah. Isn't that neat? Is that normal for yeah. all of them? Yeah, that's normal. A lot of them will be like that. Thank you. Is that like a how many pounds? Oh, that's probably a pound and a half. Okay. It's not bad for a fish of the day. I know, I know. That was nice. <laughs> Orange eye. Off he goes. Move on out of here and go back towards the boat ramp and fish that whole left bank over there. Okay. There was a lot of fish packed in there yesterday. Good morning. Yeah. yeah. There we go, there we go. <laughs> you know he was looking at it the whole time. Oh, neat. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> People who've never fished for bass, they ask, what's it like? What are, the, what are these bass like? What's their character? And I think about when I was a kid, a friend of mine fished our lake and he caught a bass and when he brought it in it had a whole duckling in its mouth this bass hadn't even choked the duckling down and it had <laughs> gone for his bait and they're gluttons that's what they are and that's what makes them so fun to fish for yeah boy these hooks are just sticky sharp yeah. we don't like missing fish nice. look at that Is he just younger? Yeah, just a little. He's probably about three year old. Oh, three years. Hey, yeah. can we, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get another one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, there we go. Good technique. There you go. It's just like the one Kelly got. Yep. Nice. Oh jeez. You got a beef. Okay. Look at it. All right. I don't see where there's turtles. There's fish. Nice. Oh, there, got him. Every time yeah. you fish, you can catch 20 to 30 to 40 of them. When the weather's right, when the moon is right, when when the fish are feeding, yes. and uh, the largest of the fish that you'll find in this river run four to five 
to six pounds and there's a good chance you can hook into one of these. They are one of the hardest fighting fish and they're eager to come to play. All right, we've been working down this, this bank here. Now we're gonna cross the river and uh, go back on the little side channel through, through some grass where Todd says there's some big ones. There is, and little ones. And little ones. We're getting some real good actions for early in the morning. The, the sunlight being blocked by the clouds a little bit gives the bass a little bit more confidence. And uh, we've got probably close to a dozen fish already. The river to me is characterized by lots of shallows and then ledges with deep drop offs and it, it's a little different habitat than we're used to fishing on some of the rivers to the north of here and then in eastern Oregon. The, the fish will stage oh, along the, the ledges and th they may be anywhere from six inches under the surface all the way down to the bottom, which can be as deep as 20, 25 feet in, in some reaches and even deeper in, in some of the big holes. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, good. Oh. Cool. Oh. There he goes. I guess the guy get the yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we gotta get a picture of this one. Nice fish. Good one. Good fighters. Got it. Thank you. You can let it go down on That was awesome. What a fighter. A lot of muscle in those little guys. Nice take, too. Yeah. Nice right. one. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Water's actually dropping enough. I have to start looking looking for rocks. For rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't made for a long time. With it. <laughs> it was. Didn't feel it for a while. He's kind of bumping it. Oh, good. Good, good fighter. Yeah. yeah. Nice fish. You want some water? Yeah. <laughs> hey, there's yeah. a lizard in that. Oh. oh. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, Good nice job. Oh. Nice fish, Kelly. Yeah. Wow, that's the best one we've had on all day. Oh, that is a nice fish. Yeah, I just cast it out towards the bank, and this fish came up and grabbed my bait and bit on, and so I just pulled and set the hook nice and green. started reeling in. This one was a, a medium fighter, I'd say. Yeah, uh, not too much, but a little bit, a little bit, so that was good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you're just really working hard for fish, I'll tell you. 
<laughs> Kelly's just bringing her fish in, and, and Quentin's taking the hooks out of it, and Brad, he wants some attention too, awesome. so he puts his bait nice. right straight down off the boat, and boom, he's got a fish on. That's what can happen when uh, the bite picks up again, and, and like Todd was saying, it, it goes in, in streaks sometimes, and <laughs> we just happen to be there with it. When it's, lit up again, so let's see if there's another one in there. Just like we talked about, just let it go to the bottom. Yep, he sees it, he's coming over. You're gonna give it a little twitch. And, oh, don't, don't move it. Just gotta stay still. Little teeny shakes, little teeny shakes, little teeny shakes. Dirt! Go! <laughs> he had it in his mouth. Okay. He spit it, but he didn't feel anything. You got another shot. We're sight fishing for this bass, and this will be the third offering we're gonna give it. Here we go. Here we go. Nice fish, too. Look at that with the clouser right in the corner of his mouth. Perfect. Picture perfect. Good thing Kelly left her rod in the boat. <laughs> so Todd, I started fishing with red hooks after I spent a day with TJ Stallings from Daiichi. So I said, what is this all about? And he said that he grew up in a in a bait shop and they sold minnows. And he began experimenting with colors and, and found that the, the fish would attack that, um, that red, that red uh, gill flash. And uh, that's what just happened right over here with, with Brad. He's got oh, a big oh, fish oh. on right now. That was a nice take, huh? That was, that was a good hard take. <laughs> Nice fat fish. Nice fat fish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a beauty. He wasn't coming off either. That's a good one. That one is two and a quarter. Really? Very nice. That's nice. Yeah, you got it. Because we have all the high water this year, we've got some nice pools in areas where there's normally not water. And that water warms up, much warmer than the main river. And uh, I've got a hunch there might be some bass kind of stuck in there in that real warm water. We're going to walk down there and find out. Like that? <laughs> I miss the water. <laughs> We hopped out of the boats. So we're going to grab some lunch. And I looked over and I saw this little cove where the water's a little deeper and some little ledges and stuff. And I grabbed a spinning rod with this jig on there, a little crawdad bait. The third cast, I really cranked it. And this fish streaked over to it and stopped. And I set the hook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a great bass here. He just spit out a big old minnow, too, that he'd been trying to digest. Yeah. Man. Great fish, too. It's fishing this big old jig and just cranking it, because I didn't want it to get down in the weeds. And uh, he just came sailing at it and stopped, and I set the hook, and he had it. He's yeah. going to need some dental work after this, huh, Brad? Ooh, look at that. Looky oh, at that. That is a beautiful fish. Yeah. Just hanging out here. That's a good umpqua smallmouth right there. Holy smoke. Wow. Get away more with the shiner. <laughs> here, let's take that jig off so we get a true weight. You're looking up. I got you right at five. Whoa, really? You know, it's probably because it hasn't spawned yep. yet. If this is a five pound bass, then it's, it's the biggest smallmouth I've ever caught. 
And uh, to catch it here on the Umpqua, on the Big K, is a pretty neat deal. You expect to get a few of these when you're fishing big water like the Columbia, but uh, it's really neat to get one here in this clear green water.